But you, so you used to live in Peckham. Yeah. We uh, with like a big group of like we all sort of know them and we went to yeah. uni with them and stuff like that. Yeah. What did? How? When did you decide that that wasn't the life you wanted to lead anymore? Uh, well, I suppose like I kind of rewind it just give people a little bit of a backstory. Like we met at Loughborough University yeah. right, playing rugby, and then after that, uh, you went to Jersey to play rugby, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then ended up in extra eventually. And I went uh, into finance in London, and that's kind of like what I was doing. I was living in Peckham with a big group of boys that we went to uni with, like going out on the weekends, like living for the weekends kind of like on the grind, like, you know, yeah. sue into the finance, financial district and stuff. And it always felt for me like a bit, uh, like I felt really torn the whole time because my passion is like what I'm doing now. And I'm sure we'll get that to, to that at some point, but like, I love like health, performance, nutrition, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I still had that like innate uh, desire to, you know, do that with my life. But at the same time, I was like kind of hypnotized by, you know, London, money, yeah, yeah. blah, 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 you know, as, as loads of people get and, and are and stuff. And uh, it got to a point where, well, I moved to Brixton, got the flat in Brixton, moved to Brixton, and it just Izzy saying to me, so my girlfriend Izzy was like, uh, let's go away because, you know, it was just, I think London was just consuming me, man. I was like becoming, I was becoming like very sort of materialistic. I was, a lot of like my hobbies and shit were just dropping away, like, Whereas before I was big into my big into my training, it was like I was still into it, but I didn't have the time to do it. You, you just so, you know, work and travel, commuting takes up so much time. Yeah. And I was kind of like training really got put on the back burner and I was like always, uh, you know, kind of a bit mad at myself because I was like, I want to be making progress with my training. I want to be feeling healthier. Do you, do you think it's just the two things can't marry up together? Do you think it's just if you want to have these kind of like high pressure, high power jobs? that you just can't like is is there an, are there enough hours in a day because you're pretty you're you're like a an efficient guy do you know what I mean like a, is, is there any way you think you can make that work I think I think you could like if I was still in London now working I think I could but at the time I was like fresh into London yeah. and I was going out on the weekends so like I really struggled with that like balancing those three things like getting to the weekend going out Friday Saturday uh, Sunday would be a write off so then you're trying to sort of like cram your training into the work week and and with commuting and working like yeah. a long job as a as like a sort of junior where you got to like prove your worth and stuff it was yeah it was just too it was unsustainable um so we ended up going traveling doing india and like literally within three weeks of being in india uh i just realized i was like fuck i can't go back and work in finance like it wasn't making me happy at all and just started like reconnecting with you know, stuff I was passionate about, nutrition, holistic health, reading, yeah, podcasts, and just consuming loads of information. And out of that sort of exploratory period, the inception for Ape, my company was yeah, yeah. born. Um, and then it was just about coming back and go, I went back into finance to save the money to finance the start of my company. Because for a while you were commuting from Bristol to London, right? Yeah. Like, and yeah, that sounded pretty rank. Yeah, it was, it was, it was horrible. <laughs> like, I'd drive up to London. I'd get up at like four a.m. on a Monday morning, drive from Clifton, where we were living at the time in Bristol, up to London Park in Hammersmith on the outskirts yeah, yeah, yeah. of London, and then catch the tube into Dowsett's house. Yeah. Get changed. Oh no, catch the tube into work, and then after work, I'd go stay. Come at, back and stay at Craig's. Craig's. For, who's another then, one of the yeah our uni friends sort of crowd, yeah. and then commute back but yeah it was it was a worthwhile experience like i always see it as that i remember whilst i was doing it feeling like super at a loss like what the fuck am i doing like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. madness and i listened to a, a podcast with paul check um he was like one of the guys i study under for holistic health and he talked about that concept of the pro positive prostitute archetype like yeah, yeah. when you're basically prostituting yourself for money but in a positive way because ultimately you know, you're gonna, with that money, you're gonna do something good or you are doing something good. And I think that concept like really helped me get through that period. Cause it was like, I could accept what I was doing in that time. It didn't matter that what I was doing wasn't making yeah. me happy. Cause I was creating the ability to go, you know, do something. Does he only do. say it's, so the idea that it can be, you could have that positive archetype of like being a prostitute. Is that, do you think what's, it's solely dependent on the fact that it's like a temporary fix. You're only doing it temporarily in order to achieve like a goal at the other side of it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Then it's sort of, I wonder like, if if a lot of people go in having that mindset, but then just get like 
caught up in it all. Yeah. Well, I think with, with uh, I don't know, with like working in London and working in jobs in general, it like kind of, especially in London, I suppose, it's like a, a bit of a flash in the pan for some people because you get there out of uni, you're fresh faced, yeah, yeah. so much stuff to do. Like every, like a lot of people are there, you know, friends from where you've grown up are there, people you went to university are there, you know, people college and you're like multiple friendship groups you're going out all the time. And, you know, and then next thing you know, like, you know, years have gone by and maybe you've bought a yeah. house, you've got a mortgage now and you're kind of like stuck in... You're roped into it. Yeah, you need to be earning the salary you're earning. And like, when you start a company, like I took a massive cut in, you know, ma massive, massive pay cut. And, uh, and and it's been years of like grinding and like take, taking minimal money out of the business, just for investing everything back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get to a point where we're finally getting like a little bit comfortable now. But, you know, it takes a long time. And I think like you've got a you kind of, unless you get like really lucky and you're able to just like strike gold with your business idea or whatever, you know, you've got to give yourself time where you're able to grind and you've obviously got a cut off where, you know, you kind of got to do it before you have kids or before you have a mortgage or anything like that.